Welcome to Hashtag Leadership, What's On Your Mind. My name's Stuart Wellington, and I'm super excited to get episode one underway and tell you more about what we've got coming up for you. So the first episode, I'm going to be doing myself. So I'm going to be telling you a little bit about where this has come from, a little bit about myself, and I'll probably be doing one um, individual podcast each month. But I've got an amazing lineup of guests coming up for you. They're going to be coming on and talking about leadership, and we're going to be asking them what's on their mind. So it's either storytelling about their leadership journey or bringing the here and now, what they're dealing with in their current situation, their current um, role responsibility within leadership. So each guest can have 20 minutes. Um, I'm going to give myself 20 minutes now to explain to you a little bit about where this has come from, my background and my passion to help you and drive you forward on your leadership journey and add as much value as possible. So I've got to watch here. I'm going to give myself 20 minutes. Wish me luck. So this has come from the last six months I've been working in the leadership field um, because of my background, which I'll go into in a second. But lots of people are telling me um, I need to start sharing this story. And, and I'm really passionate about storytelling. It makes you think. Um, it changes your perspective. Um, it takes you out of your comfort zone. It takes you out of your world and, and adds value and perspective. Um, and, and listening to people's stories has just got something to it. And um, we know we do a lot of storytelling um, in history, and there's a lot of impacts that having sharing your knowledge and experience through storytelling can have an effect on others. So on this, so this platform, you can listen to this on your um, podcast provider, or you can watch me on my YouTube channel. And obviously in the future, our guests will be coming on live as well. So you'll be able to see them and have a little bit more of a connection with them. So do check us out on um, your podcast and also the YouTube channel. So the guests are business owners. They are ex-colleagues of mine. They are specialists in their field. Um, all have a link back to leadership. Okay, so I, I can't wait to share that with you. Um, so where does all this start? So as you can see behind me, um, I'm ex-military. You might know my story already. I did 12 years in the Royal Air Force. And, but even before that, I have a background in sport, um, in education. I went to uni, did sport and exercise science. And I've always had an um, interest in sport performance, um, teams, groups of people. So actually, all the stuff I do now, if I look back at where I've come from, it's amazing how it all knits together, isn't it? And a lot of people don't take that time to reflect on, on where they've come from, which has been really interesting in my business journey as well. And <clears throat> also, I'll be asking these people who will be coming on about the big passion I have is about you have to lead and drive yourself forward first. Um, and when I do a lot of workshops and work with clients and I say, are you a leader? I'm amazed at how many people have to, one, pause and think about that for a long time, and two, don't even um, register that they have a leadership responsibility. Um, and and as, as I said, leadership from self is so powerful. Um, business owners driving small teams and growing a team of people, it's that goes from that show to tell, okay? So it, you could tell everybody what to do and you're making robots, okay? We, we don't want robots, we want engaged, thought-provoking, problem-solving people, okay? And if we, we model that um, that habit, that behavior, um, I saw a stat a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago now, actually, um, where it said that 70% of the habits and the behaviors within an organization come from the leader. Um, and I predominantly work with business owners, so you can imagine the impact that can have. Um, you might have seen or you might be involved in an organization where large corporate, and again, it, it's more challenging when you're building that culture, that leadership um, from a, a bigger picture. And again, moving from uh, single figures to double figures in employees and smaller businesses have a massive impact if you get the foundations right early on. Um, so I, I went into the military. I went in doing what I love to do. It's one of my big passions to get paid to what I love to do. 
Um, I was a physical training instructor, so I did uh, nine months training and um, to do my specialization, which was physical training. That was after the 10 weeks basic training that everybody else does um, and built some fantastic um, teams and networks of people and um, such an immersive experience that anybody who's been through that. But the biggest thing as well that the military really um, do well is the shared experiences. So everybody who joins goes through what then I, I, I progressed onto, um, which was adventure training instructor. So <clears throat> there's three specializations. There's parachute jump instructor, there is remedial instructor, and there's adventure training instructor. I went to go and do the parachute jump instructor because uh, I've done a couple of jumps before I went in, but it came quite apparent once I was in and I was doing the role that the adventure training instructor role really kind of interested me. Um, before I went in the military, I nearly went and did out of bounds, out of bound education, um, which I wasn't really aware that that was an option in the military. Um, so it surprised me. I liked the variety. So in the winter, I could do a lot of winter stuff, predominantly skiing, which sounds amazing. But I'll go into exactly what that what that is and was in in, in a minute. Um, and in the summer, it was a lot of rock climbing, um, mountain walking canoeing, kayaking, all that sort of stuff. So it was a natural fit. And, and I went in for the activities, okay? And quite quickly had a, a complete pivot, a complete change of, of, of focus. So that was a year long course. And we did, that was when I started to get exposure to leadership and development training because the military across the board, um, all services use adventure training as their medium to develop people. And you might already know the military are quite big on their developing their people. And um, because then if we set the foundations, that's why in basic training, everybody goes and does some adventure training. So if you get deployed out somewhere and you get dropped into a team, you have some shared experiences. So you've all done basic training. There's only certain places in the country and um, across all the services that you could have done your service. Um, sorry, basic training. So then you then have adventure training. So there's only so many places in the UK and in Europe that you would have done your adventure training. So you can start knitting together all this consistency of training, okay, on a large scale, as, as you're, I'm sure you're aware. So <clears throat> we are developing and driving people forward through the medium of adventure training. So we had people, um, I was at an, a pure event training instructor and center for about three and a half years of the 12 years I was in um, at the end of my career. And um, we had groups of people coming and we had them for a week, really fully immersive. We had teams of between six and 12-ish. And they, you were their instructor for the week and they were turning up on the bus, expecting a great time and it was just a bit of fun. And they were going to do these fantastic activities, which, yes, we did all of those. It was done in a fun but challenging environment. We did some fantastic um, activities and exposed them to some fantastic training. But it quite quickly has a, a, a turn, and I was really inspired. The majority of our um, basic training clients were, I say clients, um, <laughs> personnel, were between the ages of 17 and 20, let's say, just to give a broad brush there. So <clears throat> young, up and coming, just took the plunge in the military and were up for anything, okay? And, and really wanted to have fun and joy. Yes, they were in basic training, which was a do exactly what you're told, when mentality, but they came to events training and it was, <clears throat> it was a little switch for them because we were now empowering them to think about their journey, their future, <clears throat> and yes, yeah, some of them were like, well, I've just been shouting and screamed at for the last three, four weeks, however long it was, and what to wear, where to be, marching around everywhere. In adventure training, there was no rank. So they, I was Stuart, um, they were their first names, broke down that barrier, and we were developing them as people, okay, to then put them back in, because that's one of the bis big disjoints I've seen leaving the military. In, in companies doing that leadership development or team building. So, so we do the team building, but there's no what if uh, or so what. 
um, piece, which in the military was, what can you do from this week moving forward? What can we transfer across? Because you had people there who were probably going to go back into their um, training. The next day, the next week, they might have had a leadership responsibility there and then in the um, training environment. Or in two years' time, when they had their first promotion, they'd have a group of people. So we built that foundation of people who are forward-thinking, who are um, interested in, or not interested in, who have team dynamics at the core, can see and open up um, mentality of, of not just being tunnel vision, tunnel focus, it's all about me. It's a very much a team dynamic. So that was absolutely fantastic. It was great to see from people arriving on a Sunday to the presentations they did on Friday and, and sitting there and looking at the impact you've had on individuals and teams. And the, uh, I just call them light bulb moments um, that they feel like, actually, this is, this is going to be really useful moving forward. Yes, we're having fun. Um, so I'll give you an example of that. We'd have um, open water, canoes, kayaks, activities. And um, we would show, for example, one, one person how to put up um, the, the rig for the day. And they'd have to go and then deliver that to the team. And the team would have to then do it. Bring even down to taking the canoes off the trailer. And um, these are the techniques we want you to use. Off you go. Um, this is how you put your um, kit on, your life jacket, your buoyancy aid, your, your helmet. This is the kit you need. Okay, always empowering them to think and make those decisions and choices. And then we'd be out on the open water. You can imagine it's not everybody's cup of tea. We'd take people out who are non-swimmers. Um, we'd obviously take a bit, a bit more of a care out of them. They'd have a different colour helmet on. But somebody would be a complete stretch for that experience. And then we'd review, we'd do some challenges, do some tasks, and then we'd actually reflect of, of what happened. And then the next day, we'd take them up in the hills and we'd take them rock climbing. And then the person who was at high-end stretch on the open water would then be fine. They, they climbed all the time. That was their hobby before they joined up. And vice versa, somebody who was fine in the open water would then be petrified heights, which is quite a common one. Um, I've got a, a, a proud thing that I only had in the amount of students I had through. I only had one person who didn't do an ab sale. And to be honest, that was because of external factors. We had a high ranking officer um, visiting the center and I held on to the last minute. Um, I was able to get people down um, through the, it wasn't just me either, the team, the camaraderie, the support. It, it was fantastic to see some of the experiences that I had with, with teams and, and bringing the best out of people. And the unlock your leadership um, potential model that I created um, 12 months post the military. Um, I sat down and looked at what I'd seen in the corporate world, in the outside world for 12 months um, and created this model. And um, it's got seven, seven steps and you might have already seen it uh, and I'll share a, a link to my social media and my platforms. But this came from two observations. One was everybody's busy being busy and there's no focus and direction. And the other one was lots of people are getting promoted because they're really good at their job. But then as we know, leading people is a completely different beast to just being really good at your job. So those are the two things. But the reason I mention that is because the actual setup of the model, I've got like a crisscross, it's like a spider's web effect where all the seven steps interact with each other okay and this came from working at this center so at some point in the week i got into a routine of doing this little task with every single person every single group sorry and then um, and what happened i used to get a massive ball of string and i used to give it to one person i say pay out some string keep hold of one end and throw the ball to the next person and we obviously in this case there's seven steps so imagine there's seven people in the team and I just ask a couple of questions. One might be, what do you bring to this team? And then they say their answer, then they throw the string on. And then they throw, throw the string on, keep it going. And I ask another question. It will go at different um, angles, different people, different times. And, and I'd say, after a couple of questions, three, four, I'd say, right, okay, stop there. 
Um, great, thank you very much for sharing that. Really, really useful as a team to know what each other has brought to that discussion. And we know more now about where you're coming from. Okay, so that um, knowing individuals, knowing the team. Now I used to just pick one person and say, right, just, just drop the string for me and take five steps back. And then you can imagine this was, this was the reason. So if you take somebody out of the team dynamic, you've got to understand, sometimes you can't control that external negatives or external responsibilities or distractions, whatever that may look like. Um, but I would just say, so what? Discuss. Okay, what does that mean? Um, and you can imagine the amount of different variety of um, discussions we have then, because we don't want to alienate somebody from the team because we are losing so many connections. Um, we want to make sure we want to look out for that to happen. Um, everybody holding on to that little spider web is high performance, okay? We want to keep everybody together because we're going for high performance there, okay? I mean, individuals and teams. So, so that's just a quick review of what my underlying um, foundations of what I deliver in the Unlock Your Leadership Potential model. Um, because if you take any of the seven steps out, you're losing so many connections. And when I take clients through it on my online course, um, it's interesting when we, we go round in an order um, which has a, um, a reason why it's that order, but we jump back and go across all the time which is, is, is fantastic for them to be able to have that tool to, to piece together their leadership journey. Um, <clears throat> so very lucky enough to be able to do that type of work with the people I have. So across all three services and um, basic trainees to senior officers, so sort of board level and um, for corporate and then specialist teams as well, observational specialist teams, which is, again, I just loved observing and watching the team dynamics. Um, I story tell a lot about all the different experiences and the way I see my mind goes a thousand miles an hour when it comes to leadership. And I like adding as much perspective and making people think around, around the topic. So give you an example in the events training world um, experiential learning was massive. Um, we were there to keep people safe. Okay. But the experiential learning was probably the most impactful thing that happened. So we used to take people out for two days um, out on the hill in North Wales, and it was wild camping 90% of the time. So you had to carry everything with you. Um, and the navigation was over to them. We gave them points to get to, the map reading. We'd done some prior learning before we went out for the two days, um, kit, equipment, timings, everything. Um, I had an experience, two experiences really, um, slightly separate, but definitely linked together. Some of the um, the personnel came with other instructors and they would take a, a, a shadow role of us. And the amount of times they used to comment about how do you not give them the answer? And then obviously, as we know, if we just tell people the answers, they're not getting that learning, they're not having those experiences but it's challenging and I can see when you're fully there and you're able to start, sit back and watch and become that from operational to strategic and um, what things it opens up and I'm just calling it things because there's so many things that can open and um, one group and um, stay in my mind um, and I won't give you too many of the details because we are running out of time but I basically allowed them to walk for two hours in the wrong direction and and, and yes well, we can laugh about it and um, the weather wasn't too bad and um, I was taking into account all the factors it was quite early on in the day and um, however that doesn't make much difference because if we can walk in the night the amount of times that we used to get to the evening and we weren't there and the groups would look at you and say like who's gonna step in here now and take us to the campsite um, and it was a case of like head torches out um, keep going and that experiential learning so this group went for two hours and um, they stayed safe and um, we walked for two hours back again and um, but the value of what they got from that experience and you can imagine what was going on in that time two hours of actually you know it was probably the last hour was uncertainty a little bit of conflict within the team and um, decision making when do we make that decision 
and and again you can see people looking at you i used to keep my distance away from the group um a good 20 meters you could walk along ridge lines so you could still see them in the valley and um, as long as you still have their safety at, at hand that experiential learning happens okay so you can imagine then the um the sort of outcome of that was so much um in the classroom afterwards and those individuals that took part in that um have got tools they've got awareness they can see things going wrong they'd have more confidence in maybe saying something um, as you can imagine, a group of quite newly formed personnel, there was two or three people in the group of eight, nine, ten, um, who knew they should have changed or said something earlier on and didn't. So again, talking about that process and um, what does empower us um, to, to have a say in a team dynamic. So I'm 10 seconds short of 20 minutes. So I'm going to stop there. Um, that's my 20 minutes done. I've got so much more to share with you and that just sort of makes me a little bit more happier now that I'm going to once a month jump on and do a little bit of storytelling about what's going on in my world with regards to leadership, what my clients are talking about, some stories that I can bring to you um, and adding value. And I'm super excited to get the first couple of guests on. I've got about 15 guests lined up for you already and I know that 20 minutes is going to be challenging let me tell you. So I'm going to prep them, tell them they've got 20 minutes and give us their best, okay? Their best bits of their leadership story, their best learnings, okay? And their best value adds to give you supercharge in your leadership journey. So thank you very much for listening to episode one of Hashtag Leadership, What's On Your Mind. Remember, you can watch us on YouTube or you can listen to us on your podcast provider. So my name is Stuart Williamson. Thank you very much for listening.